Hello Facebook. This is Jamie Slater here. Uh, I'm going to play you some jazz guitar and then I'm going to give you a little bit of a lesson uh, about jazz guitar. Just, I don't know, maybe you can, if you're looking for guitar lessons and perhaps uh, you feel like what I'm teaching may be able to help you, then, you know, we can uh, please get in touch. We can talk about it. Um, if you notice, I'm wearing black. For the first time, I'm wearing black. Um, uh, we've got a lot to kind of be thoughtful about. Um, aside from uh, George Floyd, uh, which way back when, when all that first kind of went down, uh, during the blackout day, I was going to make a lesson. And for some reason in my black shirt I just got sidetracked every possible which way uh, had problems with sound you know I did like a 20 minute video or something and the sound was screwed up and since then I fixed my sound situation and um, then I got I started again and I got a phone call right in the middle of it that screwed it up then uh, something happened and there was some text alarms or something that went on and I just had some issues that night, but uh, tonight I'm wearing black for a, a more personal reason. Uh, a friend of mine from high school has passed away, and she was 49 years old, and um, she had been battling cancer for the past few years, and um, I'll be 52 this year, so, and, and honestly, I feel the same as I always have. I feel the same as I did in my 20s um, and uh, every time I look in the mirror I'm like oh it's my dad you know but uh, yeah I remember her being a very kind person and uh, very pleasant smart and cute good-looking person and uh, I'm not real close with her but I have friends on Facebook uh, in common with her that are close to her and so I want to send out condolences to her family uh, today and um, a third reason for my black shirt today is that we've had 1200 more COVID deaths which brings our total up to over 160,000 people and uh, our infection rate is um, still really high we've got over you know, coming close to, I think last time I looked, close to 5 million people infected with this virus. So let's all be thankful. Hopefully everyone within the sound of my voice and my guitar is uh, doing well. So jazz guitar. So how you lay out the neck as a jazz guitar player is kind of important. And I'm going to play a very basic 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 jazz guitar song um, that everybody who's ever even started to learn jazz guitar knows but I'm going to um, discuss some things uh, about my philosophy of using this song to teach and the song is Autumn Leaves and um, uh, we're gonna play the real book key of E minor uh, the relative major would be G major rather than the G minor version, which is commonly heard, relative major would be E flat. So, I'm gonna play this tune, and I've, I've got myself a little loop here where I played some, you know, walking bass lines and some chords to accompany myself with. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start the tune up.
Okay, so that was Autumn Leaves. And uh, I like to teach it in this in the key of E minor because the relative major is G major. Now, when I started jazz guitar, I've been playing rock guitar for a really long time. And what I find is a lot of students uh, come from that background. So uh, in rock, we play a lot of minor and a lot of pentatonic minor and a lot of pentatonic scales. And I think learning to play major and it be effective is uh is is i think a really a really good idea for jazz because um one thing i've always tried to avoid is cheese you know i don't want it to sound cheesy you know i think that there's a there's in playing which is playing the 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 notes without taking too many chances there and then there's out playing where you get to do some things that maybe sound a little more controversial, okay? Um, my opinion is you should learn how to play in and then learn how to take it out a little bit. So, one thing about this tune is that it really stays very close to the key except for a couple of little moments which are pretty teachable, you know, so you can make little adjustments. Now, the way that the guitar is laid out it, it makes it a rather archaic instrument, you know, and uh, I love it, but it's archaic, okay, which means, you know, you sit down at a piano, all your white keys are your natural keys, all your black keys are your sharps and flats. On a guitar, there's not a whole lot that's differentiating a, a sharp or flat from a natural note. You have to kind of learn those over time, and so... In the beginning of teaching jazz guitar, I try to make it as easy as I can for people to try to figure out where they are on the instrument, okay? So, the the most basic scale that we deal with in, in, in all of music is the major scale. And you've heard it, you know, is what sound of music, I think? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do. Right? So, on guitar, we have a lot of repeated notes. You know, if I wanted to play that G, that first note, okay. You know, it's all over the place, plus an open string. So we've got G's all over the place. Same thing with every other note in the scale. The notes in the scale are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So that key has one sharp, F sharp. Everything else is just a white key on the piano, just a natural note, okay? So in this area of the neck, it's played, but look, I got a lot more to go in that, in this part of the neck. All right, there's the second octave of that scale, and then if I want to just add a note that I can reach, I can play an A, okay? So, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, because I can reach it, okay? Now, I'm going to play exactly the same notes that I just played there, only this time I'm going to start at the 5th fret. I'm going to start on A, G, A. Now I'm going to start on the 2nd note in the scale. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. Now there's a lot of different ways you can finger this stuff. Instead of shifting position like I did, you can see it there. And then I had to shift back. You can stretch. And that allows you to stay in position. It, it's just everybody's got a different fingering for scales, okay? And uh, it's good to know all of them, you know? Some people, that first scale where I'm doing this, they're doing this. You know, there's a lot of ways to do it. But for me, those two scales are there. Now, I start here at the seventh fret and I play the same notes. B, and this time I'm starting on the third note of the scale. G, A, B, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. Same notes, different part of the neck. Back where I started, just an octave higher. So what you end up with is, is kind of, uh, you know, five positions but they start to meld together after a while. Now, in those five positions, if we just take the first note 
or should I say the first octave of every scale to G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and use them all for a chord. Whoops. We get this. And we can do it in every scale. And the, the reason why I teach this stuff this way is because it allows the student to use some basic chords and those root position. In other words, if it's a G major seven chord, the G is the lowest note, a A minor seven, the, the A is the lowest note. So I can also do those chords. Instead of doing a position, I can just kind of do it down a string. G major, A, B, C, D, E. Getting hard. F sharp, G. Now if I take that first scale again, go to the first note that I find on the B string, I get a, I'm sorry, the A string, I get a B note. B minor seven, C major seven, D seven. And so on. So what that means is uh, for that chord progression that we did, the autumn leaves, it goes A minor seven, D seven, G major seven, C major seven, F sharp minor seven flat five or half diminished B seven E minor seven okay or E minor that'll work okay that chord progression can be played inside of each one of those scales okay so and it's just because we know we we need to learn how to play all the common chords with a root on the E string, A string, D string. And this is how we start. Later on we get into inversion and it's and we do the same thing with inversions. We put those inside of the scale, but this is the basic way to get a student up and running quickly. So if I wanted to play that autumn leaves chord progression that I played in this part of the neck, if I wanted to do it down here, it would be very similar. It would just be skills. So if I see an A minor 7 on a page, I've always got a scale I can play over. Not that you always want to play a scale, but the right notes are generally going to be found in the in the scale, even if you don't think of them as the scale. The reason why I lay the neck out like this is the scale is kind of everything. It's all the chords, it's all the arpeggios, and it's all the scale. So when I say arpeggio, what I mean is if I take this G major chord, now we're playing what? Four, five notes there? Five notes. But there's some repeats. The G is repeated twice in that particular form, but it's really only a four note chord. Now that arpeggio is straight from the scale. Same, same notes as the scale. It's all the same. So 
the, the, and it's only just a few forms. It's, it's a lot of repeated material, things that you can do. So by the same token, you saw me do the chords down the guitar on the E string and, and down on the A string, we can do it on the D string as well. We're gonna get to the E, the sixth note in the scale. helps you to pull your scale together in a way that's going to be very useful um, chordally with the arpeggios and with the scale forms themselves. Now, I use this information to allow me to have melodic continuity. Um, so what I mean by that is that it allows me to not be stuck in a box ever. Uh, so I can start anywhere over this tune and end anywhere and what I generally try to do is try to practice from one end to the guitar to the other and try to make the melodic ideas make sense. I had a student write me about my video I did yesterday asking me if I sing the lines and yes I do uh, sing my lines um, in my head because I don't really think you want to hear me sing them, but all of this stuff that you translate to the fingerboard allows you to use the force. <laughs> and the force is just, it allows you to quit thinking about technical things and it allows you to start playing the guitar as if you're listening to someone else play the guitar. And whatever you want to hear come out you know now um, you can be chicken or egg about this thing in other words you can come up with a lick and sing it and try to figure it out or you can try to sing what you already know how to play but translating them through some sort of framework on the fingerboard is going to allow you to to get a better grasp of the fingerboard and kind of know where you are so over the first chord, so I kind of screwed that up. You start to know what's going to happen, kind of no matter how you move your fingers. singer but you get the point so you start to be able to sing whatever you want are playing or or maybe even come up with a line that's that's you know you've never done before and it's just a matter of kind of hearing tensions and being able to release that tension. But I always go from, I try to practice continuity. So I'm going to play that loop of the chord progression, and I'm just going to kind of start high in that fifth scale form. And then I'm going to work my way uh, backward towards the headstock. And you can, you can kind of see what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to make my lines make sense together. You don't want to just have a, da -da 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 -da, you know, just a bunch of notes. You want to have some sort of singable quality and you want it to swing time wise. And that's another lesson, but, but here we go. Thank you. 
we're trying to use those scales and we can do the same thing with the chords. I mean, we can. just I'm using the chords and the scales and the arpeggios all at once to be able to go from one end of the neck to the other and once you get I drop my pick down here into the abyss all right into the lava all right so once you get kind of the, the idea of doing that it allows you to be really free on your instrument and this freedom is what we're looking for that's the force that's when you start to just get an idea of what's going to happen no matter what you do. and we have to play the right stuff. If you play these scales enough and you play these chords enough and you just try to tie it all together using songs, uh, basically you develop a sense of rightness in your playing where it becomes, after a while, more difficult to play a, right, a, a wrong note than it is to play a right note. So uh, then, and, and at that point you can start working on the sounds of different scales that say maybe bend your ear a little more like melodic minor a little different right and then you know the, fir the first chord in that and it's got a sound to it kind of dark you know um, but uh, really interesting uh, one song that used this was uh, uh, what It's Probably Me by Sting. It was on the soundtrack of a movie back in the 90s where you heard this. Uh... Here it is. I think it was like... Uh, that was like the first chord in the song and it really set up the darkness of the, of the tune. Um, so... Getting the sound of these different um, scales, these different sounds, getting them under your fingers, you just stop having to think about things the way that you do in the beginning. Um, your musicianship is built in. And right now, I'm trying to, you know, in a, my own personal journey to learn how to play the upright bass, and I'm trying to translate all that to the upright bass which is not for the faint of heart, I'm gonna tell you. It's, it's a big instrument. And um, so, if you have any more questions about anything that happened today, if you have any questions about, as, as far as the music, <laughs> uh, if you have any questions about jazz guitar or jazz guitar lessons, it could be something as stupid as, you know, what are you playing through, what, what's your amp, what are your effects, whatever, what kind of guitar is that? Um, just let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Send me a DM. I do give private lessons and uh, I do them via FaceTime now. And um, so it's been pretty successful, but I could always use a few more because the gigs are not rushing back. Uh, so Jamie Slater signing off. And once again, my heart goes out to the family and friends of Shelly Millisette.
and to everyone who's lost someone uh, from COVID or recovering from COVID. And uh, we're going to get through this. Just keep a smile on your face and trying to remember that to keep going is why I'm starting to make videos again because it, after you make a few of them and you're playing here by yourself and you you know the biggest part of jazz is the interaction it really starts to get you feel like you're giving people diet jazz to a degree but the instruction is still good and I'm gonna keep trying to help anybody I can help to do that and hopefully things will come back so thank you and take care Jamie Slater signing off and uh, if there's anything I could do to help you in your journey of music please let me know I'll do the best I can for you